Hi guys! Here is my beautiful Lucian. He, I was able to get him to come up and lay down. Isn't he gorgeous? He's grown so much. He is, let's see, he was born December the 6th, so he's a little over four months old. Um, April the 6th, he'll be five months old. Hi baby. I'm sorry, April, May the 6th, May the 6th, he'll be uh, five months old. And he is a wonderful little dog. As I said in the one video, he's pretty much the one I can get to listen to me. He listens to mama. He loves his mama. Don't you, baby boy? Don't you? Yeah. Um, Toto, like I said, she it's hard to really get her to sit still. And Snow's so big, I don't think he'd even fit in the frame. <laughs> but um, even though he, I, looking at this angle, it makes him look big. But he's actually still fairly small. I mean, he's compared to my... Snow, I mean, snow would literally not even fit in the frame. I mean, I all you'd see is fur. <laughs> but I wanted to show you guys Lucian. You all never got to meet him. You saw a picture of when, I think when I first adopted him, I showed you guys a picture, but I never actually got to um, bring him in to meet you guys. And I don't know that I would have been able to, but it would have been nice. But what do you think, baby? Huh? Well, say hi to Mrs. Ingram's class. Say hi. Who's a good boy? All right, we are um, going to read. Hopefully he will allow us to do this. He should, he's a pretty good boy. Um, we're going to continue to read Hachiko Waits, which we've been reading now. And this will be our part four. And we're gonna read chapter seven and eight. And where we had left off, so most of you uh, that have been following us, uh, the professor had passed away and uh, Yasuo and his mother had adopted Hachi or attempted to adopt Hachi. They took him home, introduced them to, introduced him, excuse me, to, uh, uh, let me find the right page here. Here we go. Introduced him to um, his father and they were on their way to take him for a walk. And they opened up the door. They had the rope around his neck to like, cause I mean, you have to remember this is 1924. They didn't really have like a lot of leashes and stuff back then. And they went to go take him for a walk and he ran off. And that was the end of the chapter. So we're gonna see where see what happens. So okay, so we are chapter seven, Hachiko Waits by Leslie Newman. Okay. The morning after Hachi disappeared, Yasuo woke up early. He washed himself quickly, put on his school uniform, and hurried into the tatami room to speak to his mother. Good morning, Okasan, Yasuo said. Did Hachi come back? Yes, that's mommy quit. No, Mrs. Takahashi said. Ote-san looked for him before he left for work, but he did not find him. I am sorry, Yusuo. Come sit down and eat something. Yusuo sat on his cushion, picked up his chopsticks, and tried to eat some rice, but he could not. He could not even take a sip of miso soup. There was no room for food in his stomach. It was too full of sadness. We will never see the professor again, Yusuo said, his voice heavy with sorrow. And now we will never see Hachi again. Yasuo stood up from his cushion and gathered his school books, moving slow as a turtle. As soon as he and his mother left the house, he began to search for the professor's dog. Hachi! Hachi! Yasuo called, cupping his hands around his mouth. Then he stood very still and listened, but he could not hear the footsteps of the Akitakan. Yasuo took two more steps, stopped, and cupped his hands again. Hachi! Yasuo did this all the way to the train station, but it was no use. Hachi was nowhere to be found. The station master greeted them eagerly at the top of the stairs. Good morning, Mrs. Takahashi. Good morning, Yusuo, he said. How is Hachi? He ran away, said Yusuo, looking down at his shoes. We do not know where he is. He is such a handsome dog. I am sure someone will take him in and care for him, said Mr. Yoshikawa, trying to make Yusuo feel better. I hope so, said Mrs. Takahashi. Yusuo had a hard time paying attention to his schoolwork that day, and he did not do well even in math, his favorite subject. Usually, Yasuo moved the beads of his abacus swiftly along their rods and called out the answers to addition problems long before his classmates did. But today, he could not concentrate. For those of you, I think he actually made it blurry, didn't he? What did he do? <laughs> it's okay. Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay. Um, I was just reading about an abacus, which is a math tool. And... We don't really use them that much nowadays. They were at they were used at um, a lot when uh, 
especially during this time in the 1920s. They were even used, I think, in like the 60s and 70s. When I was growing up, um, the decade that I grew up in, they they did not use them. But what they are are, are these, they're these little like wooden manipulatives that have like little beads on the side. Honey, sit down. You're fine or I'll have to stop the video. Sit. Um, and you basically, like, if you're saying, like, five plus nine, like, they would have five uh, red beads and five yellow beads, and you would put them together so it would be, like, um, you know, five plus nine, and you could say what it equals, and then you count them. So um, maybe if, um, I'll see if I can find, actually, just for those of you that are curious, I'll see that I can, if I can maybe get on Amazon and I can see if I can find um, an abacus, because I know they still sell them for many uh, math manipulations. All morning long, Yasuo worried about Hachi. Was he hungry? Was he thirsty? Was he safe? He knew it was not his father's fault, but still, he wished that somehow Ota-san could have held onto Hachi's rope more tightly, but Yasuo knew Hachi would have run away eventually. The Akita would never rest until he found the professor, and as soon as Yasuo had thought, an idea crossed his mind. Maybe, just maybe, Yasuo's mother met him when school was out, and they walked to the station. When they boarded the train to Shibayu, Yasuo pulled his mother through the train until they stood in the first car right in front of the door. Why are you thinking? Where are... Sorry, guys. Why are you in such a hurry today? Yasuo's mother asked. Yasuo did not answer. He wanted to keep his thoughts to himself, hoping if he did so, what he yearned for would be true. Sit down, baby. As soon as the train pulled into Shibayu Station and the door slid open, Yasuo leapt onto the platform, and just as he had hoped, there was the golden brown Akitakin sitting in his usual spot, waiting for the professor. Hachi, Yasuo cried, throwing his arms around the dog's neck. Hachi wagged his tail once and allowed Yasuo to hung, hug him, but he did not stray from his task of looking up at each passenger who stepped off the train, hoping to catch sight of his master's face. Mr. Yoshikawa, Mr. Yoshikawa hurried up to Yasuo and his mother. I am so glad you are here to see for yourself that Hachi is all right. He arrived a little before three o'clock, just like always. I knew he would be here, said Yasuo. He stroked Hachi's neck. He had not given up hope, said Mrs. Takahashi. She watched as the dog's dark eyes searched the face of every single person on the platform. He is very devoted. Would you like to help me care for him? The station master asked Yasuo. He will need food and water every day. He will need his thick coat brush to keep it shiny and clean. The station master looked over at Hachi and he will need someone to keep him company, and I will come every day after school. Yasuo looked up at his mother. Please, Oka-san. Mrs. Takahashi knelt down beside her son. Yasuo, do you remember what Ota-san said about taking care of a dog? And here we have, are you gonna let me show? Here we have an illustration, beautiful illustration. Of, um, it's okay, just showing everybody if they can kind of see it. I'm on the train station. You can see Hachi guys right down there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's so interested, guys. Yes, Otasan. He said it was a big responsibility and it would be my duty for a very long time. And once again, guys, one of the vocabulary words for next week is uh, responsibility. And basically a responsibility, it's a duty. Um, we all have responsibilities. I have a responsibility to take care of Lucian and take care of all of my pets. And um, it's just, it's very important. Do you feel that you're ready to take on such a responsibility? Yes, Okasan. Yasuo's mother looked at her son. She looked at the station master. She looked at Hachi. Another train screeched into the station, discharged a horde of passengers. Horde, which is another one of your words. Horde means like a large group, a large crowd. Mrs. Takahashi watched Hachi's head moved to the left and to the right as he made sure to look at the face of every person who came his way. Yes, she said at last. It is what the professor would have wanted. I know you will be good to Hachi, and he will come back to the train station every day because he knows you will care for him. No, Okasan said Yasuo. He will come back to the train station every day to wait for the professor. So we're on to chapter 8. And so it went day after day. Hachi waited at the train station in the spring when the cherry blossoms bloomed, and in the summer when the rains came. He waited in the autumn when the leaves changed color, and in the winter when the snow fell. Day after day after day, Hachi arrived at the train station just before three o'clock to meet the professor. Day after day after day, 
he was disappointed, but he never gave up hope. Mr. Yoshikawa did not know where Hachi went when he locked up the station at midnight. He did not know where Hachi slept. He did not know where Hachi spent the morning or the early part of the afternoon, but he did know where Hachi would be every day just before three o'clock, sitting on the platform waiting for his master. But instead of the professor, now it was Yasuo who stepped off the train. Yasuo had turned 10 on his last birthday, and now he was old enough to travel back and forth to school by himself. If you remember at the beginning of the story, Yasuo was five, and so it's been several years. It's now five years, because he is now 10. Hachi, Hachi, Yasuo called to the dog sitting on the platform. Hachi looked at Yasuo for a brief second, thumped his tail against the ground twice, and then turned his attention back to the crowd of people getting off the train. I will be there in a minute with your food, Yasuo said, going into the train station master's office to fill Hachi's bowl. He placed it in front of the dog and stroked the fur between his ears while he ate. A small woman with a thin gray hair pulled back in a bun came to stand next to Yasuo. Is this the dog I heard about who waits for his master, she asked. Yes, this is Hachi, Yasuo answered. The woman studied him for a few minutes. May I pet him, she asked. Yes, he will not hurt you. He is very gentle. Yasuo said the same words to the woman the professor had said to him on the day they met years before. I am sorry for your sadness, Hachi, the woman said as she stroked his neck. Hachi turned to her for a moment, and his ears slid back at the softness of her voice. She gently rubbed the white patch of fur between Hachi's eyes as he looked at her. Then a train approached the platform, and Hachi returned his gaze to the railroad tracks. As the train discharged its passengers, Hachi sat up straight and turned his head to the right, to the left, to the right again. Excuse me. Looking at all the people who passed him, a man who wore a pair of black framed glasses and a business suit and was about Professor Wayno's height walked towards Hachi. The dog sat up even taller and began to tremble all over, his nose sniffing the air. But the man hurried past, and Hachi, realizing that the man was a stranger, stiffed himself and continued his search for the professor. That man looked like Hachi's master, Yasuo explained to the old woman who was watching the dog intently. The woman reached out to stroke Hachi's fur again. Hachi, you are a very good dog, she said to him, and your master was a very good man. Yasuo picked up Hachi's bowl and looked at the woman. Did you know Professor Ueno, he asked. No, the woman answered, but it is clear to me that he was a fine man. That is why Hachi continues to hope and to wait. He remembers the kindness of his master. One day, a man in a dark gray suit and hat, whom Yasuo had never seen, came to the train station. He stood next to Hachi, watching him as several trains arrived, discharged their passengers, and departed. The man studied the way Hachi sat, looking up at each and every face that passed him, and now his own face was filled with longing. He took photographs of Hachi with an expensive-looking camera. Then the man asked Yasuo many questions about the dog and wrote everything down in a little notebook. The next day, when Yasuo arrived at the train station, Mr. Yoshikawa handed him a newspaper. Look, here is a picture of our Hachi, he said, pointing to a page. Hachiko waits, Yasuo read the headline out, out, out loud. Then he read the caption underneath. Hachi's photo. Shukun Hachiko sits at Shibayu Station waiting for his master. I think he earned the official name of Hachiko, said the station master. After all, he is our beloved Hachi, and he de deserves the name of respect. I will tell him, Yasuo said as he crossed the platform. Look, here is your photo, Hachiko. Yasuo emphasized the term of honor and affection the newspaper had added to the end of Hachi's name. Hachi wagged his tail at the sound of Yasuo's voice and turned to smell the newspaper he held, but found little interest. As always, his main concern was the people on the platform who had just come off a train. And here is your new name, Yasuo held the paper out again. Shokun, Hachi, uh, Hachiko, the faithful dog. Hachiko, you are a celebrity now, Hachi. I mean, Hachiko. From that day on, people from all over Japan came to see Chukan Hachiko, the famous dog who sat in Shibayu Station waiting for his master. Many people who had fallen on hard times drew strength from meeting him. If Hachiko does not give up hope, we will not give up hope, they said to one another. Many people stroked Hachiko's fur, believing that touching him would bring them good fortune. Those who gave the station master money so that the Hakitakin would not go hungry. Everyone who met Hachiko was moved by his loyalty and devotion. Years passed, and the station master and Yasuo were as devoted to Hachiko as he was to his master. 
Now that they had extra money to care for him, they were able to buy Hachiko treats from the food vendors outside the train station. Yasuo wandered up and down in front of the food stalls, deciding what to buy. Would Hachiko like a, boy, a bowl of udon? No, the noodles might be too slippery for him. What about a serving of odon? Tofu, eggs, fish, and vegetables cooked in broth. Tasted good to Yasuo, but he did not think the dog would like it. He stopped in front of the yakitori stand and ordered a skewer of grilled chicken. If you'll remember from, I believe it was chapter one, uh, it says that yakitori was uh, Hachi's absolute favorite food to eat. Hachiko leapt up and wagged his tail when he saw that Yasuo, what he had brought him. Wait a minute, Hachiko, Yasuo laughed, holding the food up out of the dog's reed. Let me take the chicken off the skewer and put it in your bowl. But Hachiko did not want to wait. He jumped up and knocked the skewer out of Yasuo's hand. Then he stretched out on the platform, held the stick between his two front paws, and pulled off the pieces of chicken by himself. How clever you are, Yasuo said. I have never seen a dog do that. Yasuo went downstairs to buy another serving of yakitori and asked the vendor to follow him back to the train station. He called the station master over to watch Hachiko eat. Look how smart he is, Yasuo pointed at Hachiko pulling the chicken off the skewer. Yes, he is very bright, Mr. Yoshikawa agreed, and he had an excellent teacher, the station master reminded Yasuo. He may have a skewer of yakitori whenever he wants one, the food vendor said. You do not have to pay me for it. It is my pleasure. He watched Hachiko. And here's a, an illustration, if he'll let me show it without getting up. <laughs> here's an illustration. Yeah, you don't need to see it. <laughs> I'm trying to show my students of um, him showing him the yakitori shirts. And as you can see by the illustration, if you can see it, um, it kind of shows, the illustrator did a fantastic job. It shows kind of how Hachi has aged, because it's been several years since all this happened. He watched Hachiko eat for another minute, then bowed goodbye and returned to his stand. Another day when Yasuo was a teenager, he and some classmates got off the train at Shibayu Station. Now remember, they've jumped forward now. At the beginning of the uh, story, he was five, then he was ten, now he's a teenager. Uh, Yasuo, come play baseball with us, one of the boys said. I cannot, Yasuo said. I have a responsibility. He gestured toward Hachiko sitting on the platform. The station master was standing nearby. Go with them, Mr. Yoshikawa said. I will take care of Hachiko today. Come with us, Yasuo, his friend called again. We are going to the park. Yasuo looked at his schoolmates, then he looked at Hachiko. The dog's brown eyes were so full of hope and so full of sadness. He could not desert him. I will meet you later, he told his friends. After I feed Hachiko, Yasuo and the station master walked over to the golden brown Akita. Mr. Yoshikawa reached down to pat the dog's head. You are very good to him, he said to Yasuo. Someday he will reward you. Yasuo laughed. How could Hachiko reward him? You will see, said Mr. Yoshikawa. I do not know how and I do not know when, but I know it will happen. I have a strong feeling about it here. He pointed to his stomach. Hachiko is a very loyal dog. You have treated him well, and I would, I would be surprised if such a good deal went unrewarded. Time passed and Yasuo continued to help the station master take care of Hachiko. They gave him fresh food and water every day. They cleaned and brushed his fur, and most important, they made sure that everyone who touched him treated him with kindness. Mr. Yoshikawa and Yasuo used some of the money people had given them to build a shelter for Hachiko behind the train station. Sometimes he slept in it, and sometimes he did not. Sometimes he arrived at the train station wet from the rain or with bits of snow clinging to his fur. One day he sat perfectly still as a small earthquake rattled Shibayu Station. Day after day, month after month, year after year, Hachiko sat on the platform waiting. It seemed that nothing would ever stop him from meeting the three o'clock train. So that's the end of chapter eight, as you can see, chapter nine. Um, he's been pretty good. As I'm sure many of you have gotten, uh, it's kind of funny to watch him. He has uh, tried to uh, get the phone a couple times. And he's having a hard time kind of He's a little restless, but you have to remember, he's a five-month-old puppy. So, but he did fairly good, better than I thought he would do. I thought I would just have to stop it and um, film it uh, later without him here. But I thought I'd introduce him to you guys. So, all right, guys, um, this is for next week. Uh, what I just read to you, chapter seven and eight, this is Tuesday. Okay, tomorrow, uh, no, this is Wednesday, yes. And uh, so... We, I, I'm not, I, I'd originally thought about putting up a reading test, but I decided since I had up 
understanding of the story, chapter summary, and several things on Google, and on, uh, Google Classroom, excuse me, that that's enough. Um, just follow along with the story, enjoy the story. I even put links in the earlier descriptions and I will put one in this one if you would like to uh, watch the movie or if you would like to purchase the book. Um, the movie I thought was on Netflix or Amazon and it used to be, um, now you have to rent it or purchase it. So, but it is an absolutely wonderful story and I definitely recommend it. So, we're going to go ahead and go because I have a feeling he'll end up getting restless here and he'll probably start barking and want down. So, I just thought you guys would want to, you want to say anything? You want to get up? You want to see? Here, let me see if I can, I'll move the camera and see if I can show you. Just a minute. <laughs> look, look. Say hi. Hi, everybody. Oh, I'm so tired. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I hope you have a great evening, and I will see you later.